Hello everybody, and welcome back to Shrift 2. The only thing we have left in this trial version is to go talk to the Shadow Woman. So, let's go do that. But first we'll go through a bit of Richard's routine as of late. So first thing in the morning, I go to the gym. Make sure to purchase an energy drink. Oh, I've already got one. Make sure you use the protein drink before you start your daily routine. And just, I've been doing a rotation. Oh, I've already gone through my old tickets. Buy one. Intense training. Start training. All right. And today I'm doing muscle training. So training, of course, boosts your stats temporarily, and using the protein shake increases how much they're boosted. You can only train once per day, and yeah, that's about that. Normally, I go to the public cemetery to um, restore some levels, but I'm done with that for now. So, I think actually I'll go to the Energy Association and see if I can't buy things there. Alright, here we can buy some demon gifts. In okay, case Sith likes the demon fish, while Shadow Woman likes the emeralds. We got three emeralds, two demon fish. I got one more demon fish. Right, and then let's go and do it. I always finish my day off at the Iza Yoi Hotel. Sadly, we can't talk to Kate Sith in the trial version. We can talk to Shaolin. Let me just check my equipment. Okay, it's off. Not that we'll be doing anything tonight. <laughs> so just a special note, you only build trust while you don't have any indulgences equipped. I'll give her a present. Give her an emerald. You know demons well. Jewels are most appropriate present. Especially for demons that have lots of magic. I am weak demon, but still need magic. But it's still not bad to be like humans and just be happy and be given something. So unlike, uh... So trust is the one you want to build up in order to open up the chat options. Affection... It's just every time you hit a hundred, you get something from them. But I don't know exactly what, the, what, how important that'll be for now. So let's just talk to her. Talk that fine. What should we talk about? Herself. You mean me or my species? 
A pretty thoughtless question. But I guess it can't be helped that you only ask about me now, since you're a priest and all. But even though you still newbie priest, it weird you not have general information about Kageyonas. No, you look like you already know. I I'm sorry. It's just I got to see demons themselves with my own eyes for the first time through you. Back when I was accompanying Akiyama-san, I was only supposed to assist with holy tools and magic items. Not actually doing exorcisms myself. Yeah, but... Isn't church supposed to be teaching you basic knowledge about demons? Putting you into actual battles against strange beings without teaching anything is too reckless as an organization. It's not like that. I was originally stipulated that priests had eight years of training, but the actual church training period is now over ten years. I, I want to become a fully fledged priest as quickly as possible, so I imposed on Akiyama san and the others here by making them let me finish it with just basic knowledge. So, so I just finished. With eight years of training, they used to give before demons started appearing. <laughs> so how words you quit school early? Oh? So you're not fully trained yet? I'm pretty bold of you to go into an active haunting scene like that. Well, whatever. This good opportunity to teach you everything about Kageyona. We are yokai that exist since ancient times in Japan. We make shadows in hidden place on the paper sliding doors. That what the scary priest said before, remember? Almost all of us keep human form when appearing in front of humans, which is why sightings are extremely rare. Akiyama said, said you guys are demons that just appeared as shadows without really doing anything. I know you said it before, but is that really true? Yeah, that's super true. We really just peek on people and don't physically interfere. We don't whisper things to the people, and we don't try to do anything bad. We just peek, and nothing else. We're all just peeping toms. We just shadows in essence. So no one pay us any attention or knows us. That is reflection of our existence as demons. No one can see or hear you? Which is why you were causing such a ruckus at that disco? So does that mean you can choose to interfere with others whenever you want to? Like could you drag someone into the shadows? Wh whoa! You watch too many horror movies, Richard! But never do something like that! I suppose if you put lots of effort into it, we could knock someone over from shadows, but why not go to so much effort of using our mana for that? You don't even talk much! So talking for a long time makes our intentions intonations weird, so doing evil deeds not help us at all. So that's why your speaking intonation sounds so weird. You're not used to speaking. I just thought it was something characteristic of your species. It's not a species thing. The most Kage Ona are like this. Any demon that not normally talk have same problem. Entities that normally live in demon realm generally not good at converting things to human realm language. Their mouths not meant to be used for speaking. There are some who can't spare resources to concentrate on speaking because they need to maintain their form. So that is one common trait for those kinds of demons. Alright. Her body. <laughs> you staring at my body so passionately. What a studious priest. 
You sure you only want to look? I bet you plenty in the last few hours. N no, it's not that. It's just you seem awfully good at seducing humans for a species that apparently doesn't interfere with humans. And that body of yours. With those curves and proportions, it's, it's obviously materialized in a way to help seduce humans. Ah, so that what you mean. So you want to know why my body originally take the shape and how I know those techniques I use on you. Answer is simple. It's because I am succubus. That way I know human male weak points very well. A succubus? You mean the kind of demon that appears while you're asleep and makes you have wet dreams? But didn't you just say that you don't interfere with human beings? I don't physically interfere with humans. No demon can exist that doesn't interfere with humans in some kind of way. If I put it in human terms, it's like eating and sleeping. An essential part of existence outside of our role as Kageyona. My domain only in superficial sleep. Like, have you ever had less than an hour nap that turned into new dreams? Even if it's not fully wet dream, melding with someone like that is my job. Normal work during day, so using shadows makes things easier. If we talking actual power, I am inferior to proper succubus or impuse demons. But inside dreams, no one can match me. Ah! So inferior to proper succubus and impuse. Impuse is getting mentioned again, huh? So in that sense, uh, you're kind of like that idol, uh, idol vampire we ran to in the EX2. Mormo. That's it. Mormo. Of course, not all Kayona demons quite as curvy as me, but everyone has that kind of physique at least. It's rare to actually use material by like I did before, but I had a debt to repay to you. You pay debts by bad touching people? Hey, what well, I had you submit, it wasn't bad touching. You willingly gave in to it. Shadow and Darkness. When we met again at the cemetery, you gave me the ability to use shadow magic. Does that mean your kind specializes in that? Well, you mean your kind. No, I mean, Kageona demons in general seem to have a connection with darkness, which got me wondering. It seemed like you can manipulate the shadows to bind people as well. Shadows and darkness are both similar, right? They're both pitch black in similar ways. Well, it's true that I specialize in shadow magic, but I'm not happy with the way of thinking you mentioned. First, shadows and darkness not the same at all. They both darkness in a sense, but are two different things. Huh? R really Think about it um, separately. Shadow is shade made from light. If there's no light, then there's no shadow to cast. But darkness can exist without light. Light and darkness on opposite ends of a spectrum. But shadow is nothing more than byproduct of light. That why it can only appear in shadows made by people or sunlight. That includes moonlight too, because of uh, that reflection of sunlight. Well, 
I mean, if you want to get technical, night uh, uh, here on Earth, night is nothing but you're in the shadow of the moon. So, <laughs> I mean, shadow of the Earth, not the moon. So, yeah, you should be able to move around fine since the entire night side of Earth is a shadow. Some me being good at darkness magic simply because I'm Kage Ona and not because I'm some kind of shadow demon. Uh, uh huh, I see. That was a pretty convincing explanation. There's also one decisive difference between shadow and light feel. The feel? Like, light has warmth that nurtures light. Darkness has cold that takes it away, but shadow not have kind of cold that darkness does. In fact, shadow next to light not drain life from beings it touches, and not cause same kind of anxiety and fear as darkness. Like when you touch my shadow, you thought same thing, right? It not cling to you like you think it would. And not feel like it draining your heat. I suppose that's true. It looked all gooey and sticky, but it does, didn't feel like a liquid. And it didn't tear into pieces when I shook it off. It was a weird sensation. It was also strangely warm being wrapped up in it. Rather than fear or anxiety, it felt the strong sense of safety that made me want to entrust my body to it. See? Just as I thought. Though that feeling of safety probably because I affectionately holding you. Shadow is more friendly and familiar than darkness. Mixing with darkness not scary at all. Alright. And last but not least. That amulet. That remind me, what happened to that amulet you used to summon me? We used it to track Kate Sith, but it's still gone. I'm holding on to it for safekeeping for now. It was dropped by a customer at the disco, so I was thinking of trying to give it back to its owner. Now I'd like to confirm just in case, we aren't haunting it anymore, right? So it'll be a no problem if someone else has the amulet. That right. Aside from the fact that you damaged it, giving it back to the disco makes sense. But even if you find him your owner, I doubt they will take it back. Huh? Why? Apparently that amulet brought from shopping center stalls as present for lover. But they refused present. This before our summon, so not sure about reason why. Though I think couple's passionate love got complicated. There was big fight and amulet throw down behind curtain left there. You know the rest from there. There was long time where I pa pointlessly looking at a person and could tell by atmosphere that owner not want to see me again. I always like peeping. So wouldn't mind being left at disco because so many people coming and going all the time. But thinking back to being forced to watch people in place that was scary and sad, I was on verge of being changed. Changed? As example, there was a Kage Ona that lived in an abandoned shrine where other demons also happily lived. Those demons built friendships with humans, but all that Kage Ona could do was look on in envy. That because she's not able to maintain material form. But that was bad because she liked humans so much it created a desire to have them all to herself. In the end, she somehow managed to physically materialize, took the humans one after another along with their souls. Eventually, she was put down. Demons are like mirror to human spirit, can be influenced by humans or environment around them. Yes, Priest, you probably know this well. No, he quit school early, remember? So I'm really happy you found me, Richard. 
Every day is fun thanks to you. Now that free of amulet, I get to hang around and see so many interesting things. And you're also quite cute too. Keep hanging around, you can entertain me. You weird, nice guy. <laughs> Alright. That was Shao Woman. I'd like her. 